Welcome to Stay Strong series. This is Shamini Samuel, ministering with the Life Focus Society, bringing to you the Word of God. I'm reading from 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 17. For thus says the Lord, You shall not see wind or rain, but that stream bed shall be filled with water, so that you shall drink you, your livestock, and your animals. This is one verse that all of us love to hear again and again and again. If this is the promise uh, during the New Year service, we love it. If somebody is prophesying this over us, we love it. Without the wind and the rain, all the stream beds will be filled. But I want to bring to your attention this morning, this verse is sandwiched between two other verses, verses 17 and verses 18. I'm going to read from that as well for you now. Verse 16. And he said, Thus says the Lord, I will make this stream bed full of pools. For thus says the Lord, You shall not see wind or rain, but the stream bed shall be filled. This is a light thing in the sight of the Lord. He will also give the Moabites into your hands. So verse 16 talks about what a possibility is. These stream beds will be filled with water. Yeah, it's a possibility. If it rains 24 hours, we know cities that we come from will get flooded. It is a possibility. But verse 17, the method in which God's going to do it, do it is the impossibility. He says, without the wind, without the rain, I'm going to fill it. But in verse 18 and 19, he gives a command to it. He says, it's a light thing, but when I do it for you, you've got to completely destroy, rather annihilate the Moabites and their land completely. Now, this has to be taken in the context of all three verses. Let me quickly dive into the context of when this is said and what's happening. Now, here is King Jehoram, the king of Israel, who's going to war against the king of Moab, King Mesha, because that king stopped paying tributes. Now, king of Israel is not able to go alone. So he calls for help from the king of Judah and from the king of Edo. Now, if we look into what kind of king was this King Jehoram, it says in verse 2 and 3, he was not as bad as King Ahab, but he definitely was as, as bad as King Jeroboam. So this King Jehoram had no credentials or standing with God to even ask for a miracle. Now let's look into who was this King Mesha, the king of the Moabites. If you look later in that chapter, verse 26 and 27 says, when King Mesha was actually being captured, he quickly goes to his city walls and sacrifices his son, who's going to be next on the throne on the city walls. That's how wicked that king was. Now, to bring it to context, now you can understand why God wanted that complete city to be annihilated because it was filled with wickedness. Now, coming back to our context, we know what was happening, what was a promise, and who are the kings who are racing against each other. Now, God says, I will bring water. So, seven days, these king, kings move around trying to find how to wage the war. And on the seventh day, they realize there's no water for any of them, for their cavalry, for the animals. Desperation. Now they cry out to God and King Jehoshaphat says, isn't there a prophet here whom we can ask? Because prophets in those days were actually placed in political positions to give direction to the kings. And there comes uh, Elijah and he says, yes, God will do it for you, but this is the command. And then we, if you, when you read further, we see how out of nowhere early in the morning, the stream comes in and that bed completely gets filled with water. So much so that when the Moabites wake up in the morning, they see the sun shining on this uh, filled water and somehow they think it's blood, that these kings have been fighting with each other and they've self-destroyed themselves. So it's the best time to go loot and they come in and then they are killed and destroyed. The rest of the story is known. What is it that we can take away from this? Three things. The first one, God is a God of signs and wonders. That's what he says. But we live in a generation where we want to see signs more than wonders. One plus one is two, two plus two is four. We constantly look at progression. So if only this happens, this miracle can happen. But then we clearly understand from the word of God, it's not the signs that God is interested in, though he does at times sometimes, but he's a God of wonder. He can do anything at any time without anything. Second takeaway. 
this generation we constantly think about how god can multiply our resources and help us best but there are times when we realize the bank balance i have how many ever times it's multiplied isn't sufficient till the month end the contacts that i have how many ever times is resourceful still isn't sufficient to meet the ends or probably the little health that i have how much ever it's multiplied isn't sufficient for me to have good health but god says i am not a god who's waiting to multiply your resources he's a god who says i bless you out of my immeasurable resources let's choose to believe in that and third of course as always god's sense of timing and our sense of timing seven days these kings had to move around before they fell flat and asked for help but god knew exactly when the water has to come in if the water uh, filled up the stream beds any earlier it would not have looked like blood to the moabites it had to be done before sunrise god is a god of perfect timing can i request you to mull over this and believe that god is a god of wonders without signs and god can immeasurably bless us through his immeasurable resources and let's wait on god's timing god bless you